So there was anguish at first for us, and of course, and then there, and then there was anguish with Israel as well. They, they'd seen the height of what it meant to have power and glory under the reign of King David. They reigned all the land, and they were so, you know, under the reign of David, boy, they were unbeatable, undeniable. They were in charge. And yet, now those days are long gone. And they waited in anguish with great anticipation for a new chapter, a new king, a new Messiah to come our way. Well, as we found out that we had faith in Joshua on the way, we waited five more months for faith. We waited eight more months uh, for Joshua. And now Israel is waiting for their anointed one as well. Isaiah has already made the announcement. It's going to be a wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace, will be born of a virgin. And they wait with great anticipation. Israel is pregnant and their gestation period lasts for 740 years, waiting for the newborn king to arrive. Well, as Steve read that letter uh, on the day that his son, Bobby, uh, arrived, so too we had, Julian had great anticipation uh, with faith in Joshua. What will they look like? Who will they be like? What will they grow up to be? All these questions. Any of you have had children, you know these questions run through your mind. Will they be followers of Jesus? What will they be like as PKs? That's preachers, kids. Uh, what will they be like? Uh, who will break their heart? Who will break their heart? I see some little boys out here, little girls. <laughs> Whose heart will they break? You know? Um, Yours? <laughs> Jules, that mine, they'll break my heart. Yes. Uh, will the day arrive when Faith and Joshua and I, we share the platform up here together? Perhaps. I don't, you know, I don't know. The bottom line is that all, that all that wondering is just pure conjecture. Selfish dreams on my part, uh, dreaming, you know, wonder, all that. It's just conjecture. There's nothing really solid to it. And so, too, Israel had the anticipation of the Messiah. And Isaiah uh, has this great uh, letter that he writes to us. And, but the difference between his letter and perhaps Steve's letter or my wondering, my conjecture, is that Isaiah's letter is not conjecture. It's not dreaming. It's not wonderment. It's actually a plan that will come into place. Uh, that which he writes, that which he foretells, will actually take place. Uh, I don't have that luxury uh, with my own with my own children. And so the people are, with great anticipation, are longing for that day. And this is what they were thinking. The day's going to come when our king will ride in on its mighty horse. A mighty warrior will come in and will defeat the armies around us, defeat the neighboring countries, and we will rise once again. And we will display the power power of God right here in this country that we so deserve, that we once had under the rule of King David. We will have that type of king and warrior once again. Well, faith in Joshua arrived, and here they are. There's Joshua faith. That lasted for one second, and um, <laughs> they're here. They have arrived, and we have faith, who's now five and a half. Very sweet to everyone else. <laughs> yeah. She is our princess in pink. I went to find a red sweater in her closet yesterday for a little party. I couldn't find a red sweater. They're all pink. Uh, she kind of a, likes the drama. She loves to sing. She remembers the lyrics of songs we sing here in church, and she sings all the time. She remembers Bible stories with great clarity. Yesterday during quiet time in her room. She had all her dolls and stuffed animals lined up on her, on her bed, and she was standing on her bed and said, let my people go. <laughs> From the Diablo bear over there, let my people go. And I thought, wow. She has the biggest, prettiest blue eyes of anybody I've met, and they melt my heart. 
She loves her dolls, and she loves mothering them, and we call her our little cruise director because now you, you go over there, and you over here, and you people walk this way. We're walking, we're walking. Um, and she's very certain when she tells a story. I, I know all the facts. I got them straight, and I'm telling you the story. Got it straight. You know, the other, the other week, the, there's, a, there's an ATM machine right out here across the street in the parking lot, the Wells Fargo uh, ATM machine. Well, someone comes in with a backhoe and tries to steal the thing. You know, they, they rip it right out of the container, and it's down on its side. There's paper everywhere. There's a security guard standing there until whoever Wells Fargo came along to clean it up. I guess he was there for like two days. And so, um, so I come in, and I tell Kim, our administrative assistant, and I have faith in Joshua with me. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, someone tried to steal the Wells Fargo. So she's looking out the light. She goes, I can't see. I can't see. Oh, let's go into Miles Daly's office, our youth pastor. Let's go into Miles Daly's office. We can see out his window. And by God, wow, there it is. Look at it. And Faith and Joshua are looking at it and everything. And so then the next day, um, Julie and Faith went shopping. Julie comes home and says, oh, my gosh, did you see what happened to that ATM machine? I'm like, yeah. It did, someone just came by and ripped it right out of the thing. She goes, I know, but she guess what? I said, what? She said, I know who did it. Who did it? Well, Faith told me. What did Faith say? Miles Daly did it. <laughs> so, Miles? Is that a new sweater, Miles? <laughs> oh, babe. With certainty. Miles did it. No. Faith loves Jesus. She loves our church. And she loves her mommy and her daddy. Then there's Joshua, uh, who looks just like Julie. Sleeps just like Julie. How does that work? In the whole nature versus nurture debate, he's never seen Julie sleep. And yet he gets in the same positions she does when she sleeps. Isn't that amazing? He walks just like Julie's dad. <laughs> oh, it drives me crazy. <laughs> Boy, he loves sports. Uh, he roots for every team I'm not rooting for. Uh, yesterday I said, Joshua, Civil War. <gasps> What's that? Duck explain the beavers. Daddy, who are you rooting for? I'm rooting for the ducks. I'm rooting for the beavers. So, we got some issues at home. Um, He loves Brett Favre, number four, number four. He has a great contagious laugh. He loves to read. We didn't take a picture of it. We should have, but one day, Joe's like, go look in the bathroom. There he is, sitting on the potty, Sports Illustrated. (laughs) They start out young these days, I tell you what. He plays biddy ball for the YMCA. He's on the blue team, and he loves to defend. And so he says, got to get in that player. Get close. Defend him. Don't let him have the ball. And Joshua takes that so seriously. (laughs) So intense was he. He made the little boy who was guarding yesterday cry. I'm like, yes, Joshua, way to go, buddy. No, the other boy didn't cry. He got frustrated, but he didn't cry. Um, When I say, do you know who you are? He says, I'm your buddy old pal. I'm like, that's right. You're my buddy old pal. And he loves Jesus, and he loves his mommy and his dad. 